How in general would you describe your style? I want to see heads look up. Style has always been something I care about. Jesus. He has Christ. Jesus. I am not going to tolerate no more. Jesus is not going to tolerate. Yeah, feel me. Uh, I'm like, yeah, okay, wa alaikum salam. I ain't never become a Muslim, man. Yeah. I'm actually walking around New York City making la ilaha illallah. Just walking around. I can't do those things. I couldn't, I was saying the same thing to myself right up until I took my shahad. I can't do those things, man. Think of it. I was getting high and drinking and smoke and doing all these things the day before I took my shahada. Mm -hmm. And like, if you knew me before I became Muslim, you'd be like, this guy? Never. You're going to make it through. You're going to be all right. You're strong. You know, you're an athlete. And his brother, who actually was Muslim, said, you know, what happens if you don't make it, man? That's part. What if you don't? Thinking about the other side. Yeah. And he said, wow, wow. Why, why is this person depressed? You know what I mean? Drugs, I, I mean, other things such as that. Should, should, we should be like happy and healthy. And, and I'm saying everyone was like that, but it was definitely, you know, it was, like, it was like this. If this is it, like this is what people are looking for, I know this isn't for me. Right? People, fame, money, access, uh, these types of things. Full disclosure, obviously, before I was Muslim, uh, I worked uh, as a fashion model. Um, I've been off of, our family's been off of sugar for, for, for about six, six plus, going on, going on seven years now. I look at it like this. This is the day, the day. This is the day, the day. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Dean Show. We got a special salam. guest. How you doing? Waalaikum salam. How, How are you? Thank you, sir. How you doing, Sheikh? Feeling blessed. Feeling blessed. You just had some good training, huh? I did. I did. Yeah. If you, you know, man, it was great. It was great. As I said, I tried to make up three months and three hours. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you've uh, you've been active in jujitsu for some time now, right? Yeah, about. I mean, mat time. I'd say probably seven months. Yeah. You know, but it's been something I've looked at for a while and I made up all kinds of excuses not to explore it physically, mm -hmm. like not to actually get in it. But uh, man, once I got in, I'm kicking myself that I didn't get in earlier. But you're so you're not only you're actually a, a, an imam, right? Yeah, I mean, I was trained in Damascus. I served as an imam in New Haven, mm -hmm. Mashallah Islam. I was the naib. I was the assistant imam to Imam Zaid Shakir yeah. for years. And then he went to Zaytuna. And then when he left Zaytuna, I became the imam of that community. Okay, so not, not only that, how long ago did you accept Islam? Uh, 1996. 1996. Yeah. And you've also, you've been someone who's really into nutrition. Yeah, I think, you know, that's something that, you know, started probably, full disclosure, obviously, before I was Muslim, uh, I worked uh, as a fashion model. Um, and that really was the space, I think. Um, I think, I like to think that I was eating healthy, you know, before that. During that time, it definitely got enhanced. And then after the conversion, and I understood its relationship to spirituality and other aspects or dua and other things like this, I, I really think that's when it took a, it took a, took a hold, you know, in a, a whole new understanding in, in, in my life. You said fashion model. How do, how do you make a switch from fashion model to, to uh, Islam, being Muslim and practicing Islam? Yeah, grace and mercy of Allah. That's all I can say. You know, it's, it was, you know, I'd known about Islam for some time. My cousin became Muslim in the 70s, and he just gave me some really kind of, how can I say, some real subtle, but, but kind of let me do my thing without kind of, you know, forcing me or making me feel bad about myself and just kind of Your observed cousin? me. Yeah. And just kind of observed and let that go. And, and you know, 18 years later, I became Muslim. So, so really it's grace and mercy of Allah, but also having people that allow you to kind of, unfortunately make your mistakes. Um, you make them and, and, and they're there to make dua and guide you through that. Yeah. Talk to us. What, at what you, 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 you must've been, uh, what was your mindset at that time that you started to take the matter seriously? You know, I think so. Obviously, in modeling, you're seeing um, things uh, that probably people would be desirous of, right? People, fame, money, access, uh, these types of things. So everyone should be happy, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That if if that if 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 the material 
if the material uh, access um, or you know access to 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 materialism on a, on a man in a way that is kind of unfettered you can just kind of you know almost like snap your fingers and people are jumping to fulfill your 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 um you know commands your sorry your your wishes you'd think that you'd never be sad right um however that wasn't the case um because i feel that as human beings materialism isn't the thing that that you know will 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 fill that void and also you know as as you then begin to understand it through religion that's a whole nother you know, so I'm observing it just from from like not from a space of Islam, obviously, but just like wow, why, why is this person depressed? You know, what I mean, drugs. I mean, other things such as that. Should, should we should be like happy and healthy? And and I'm saying everyone was like that, but it was definitely, you know, it was like it was like this. If this is it, like this is what people are looking for, I know this isn't for me. So I, it reminds me of the uh, fashion designer from Victoria's Secret. Uh, he actually jumped off. You know the number one capital suicide site in the world is there in uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, mm -hmm. and you would mm -hmm. think he's you know uh, he would also be somebody who's just uh, got the money, that's right. He's getting paid, and he just yeah. took a dip off the bridge. Yeah, yeah. And again, I just I, I think that because there's an aspect of our life that we're not fulfilling, and you know, unfortunately, it leads him, it led him to where 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 he was at. And I but I think that with that kind of that self-reflection and that introspection and having people around you that will support you in those things, right? I think that's also very important as well too, this, this, this concept of suhbah in our tradition of companionship, right? Mm -hmm. Of having people that can talk you through those things that you're dealing with, but if everyone's on the same page and everyone's kind of after this, you know, next rung on the ladder and a material understanding, then hey, you didn't make it, sorry for you. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I had an interesting uh, experience with two individuals. One individual, he's he's a little bit older. He's a good friend of ours, and he's in the hospital, and he's supposed to have heart surgery. An amazing individual, and while he's in the hospital, he's really reflecting now. His whole because he's going to have open, he's going to have heart surgery, mm -hmm. and there's a there's a risk that he might not make it. Mm -hmm. There's a good chance it's going to be successful, but there's a risk there that it can go wrong. Mm -hmm. So he's staring somewhat subtly at death. That's right. And he's seeing things differently. He said, "Man, Eddie, I, I'm just." I'm at that point where the smallest things, you know, I'm appreciating them now. That's right. All right. And then there's another individual also that now uh, I had an experience to uh, talk with. And this individual, he, he's been exposed to the truth. He started, you know, he started also like you start practicing Islam, but then he went away from it. But then now he's exploring all these other options. He's, he's feeling anxiety. He's feeling like something's choking him. Mm -hmm. But he... Okay, I said, go ahead, explore. You know, if there's some chemical imbalance, you know, go down that route that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, seek medical advice, attention. But what, hold on. But the one who also created you, why not turn to him to help you? Mm -hmm. But, but it mm -hmm. seems like that door now, he's kind of closed. I don't know what happened in life, mm -hmm. but he's chasing all other means, mm -hmm. not this one, right? So just two different, two different people, two different scenarios. One's almost close to death, seeing something totally different. This other one, uh, what are your thoughts on when you hear Yeah, I mean, my, my, I, exactly. I mean, I have a similar story as well, too. A friend of mine kind of ticked all the boxes, you know, Ivy League education, made it to Wall Street, was making a lot of money, doing well, had a major uh, health uh, uh, issue. Um, and everyone, it was interesting because everyone was telling him, like, you're going to make it through, you're going to be all right, you're strong, you know, you're an athlete. And his brother, who actually was Muslim, said, you know, what happens if you don't make it, man? That's part. What if you don't? You thinking about the other side? Yeah. And he said, literally, it didn't matter how many degrees and you know his brother, high school education and you know no credentials, so maybe he's written off by people. But he just hit him with the truth, man. What if you don't make it? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And and there's this reality now that's set in front of you, of eternity. Yeah. And I think you know when when we when we look for solutions to just make our life better on this side, then we'll avoid. Those, those those reflections of, of this greater reality. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we've become very good at as a society, unfortunately, is that we push out the reality that we are going to die mm -hmm. and that, you know, this thing is going to come to an end. And what's that reality? I'll just be honest with you. I mean, at like 13, that concept would just make me weep. I would just, it would break the concept, of, the concept uh, of like eternity, right? Eternal dust, eternal, like whatever it was. If, you, if, I, if I didn't believe which I, I, was, I, was, I was raised as, as, as a Catholic, so I actually had this concept of God in my life. But this idea of that 
it's going to be eternal. Mm -hmm. It's either going to be eternal dust. That was kind of scary to think about. And then like eternal damnation. That was very scary to think about or bliss. So what would you have to do? I mean, God's pleasure, whatever we want to say. So the question was, okay, well, well, I don't believe that we're just going to be dust. So that one was out, right? Yeah. Now between these two, what am I going to do? And I feel like as you begin to, to, to turn towards this one, then the, then, then the earth, then the issues on this side become a lot easier to deal with. And they're put into perspective. Now, it doesn't have to get to the point of where I need to have open heart surgery. That's the hope, right? Yeah. Like these phone calls are coming. I call them phone calls. Like God is calling you all the time. Allah is, is like sending you messages and you're kind of like, nah, I'm not going to pick that up. You know, I'm not ready for that one. But then it's like, I can't avoid the call. You know yeah. what I mean? The phone call, I like that. The phone calls are coming in, but you're, 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 yeah. you're ignoring you're them. You're silent. Yeah. yeah. What do you like when you have an opportunity? What points do you like to bring up to have someone reflect purpose, purpose of life? Yeah, I think the first one is like, don't look at my life where I'm at right now. Like you're seeing 23 years of practice right now, right? So let's rewind that and start at point A, right? When I started, I was getting high and drinking and smoke and doing all these things the day before I took my Shahada. Mm -hmm. And like, if you knew me before I became Muslim, you'd be like, this guy? Never. So. You may be saying that to yourself. I can't do those things. I couldn't. I was saying the same thing to myself right up until I took my shahada. I can't do those things, man. Think of it. I'm I'm in South Africa. You know what I mean? Working in the fashion industry. I'm single, uh, man. I, the world's open to me, and I'm thinking to myself like I'm going to give all this up. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And 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 so that's a real conversation first and foremost that. And that's one of the things that I feel that's the trick of Shaytan is like, he's going to tell you all the things that you're missing out. He's never going to tell you about the things that you're going to gain, right? Like sobriety, uh, debt free. You know, I mean, these, when you begin to put these principles into your life, I mean, come on, right? The average American, I think, what, living with eight or $10,000 of credit card debt. Now you take on this Islamic principle of not having interest bearing loans and other stuff like that. Boom, write that off. That's done. You know what I mean? So now you begin to structure your life in a way that puts things into perspective, the things that probably are causing you the anxiety that you're dealing with right now and trying to get away with. So I think that's something where I like to start with right now is it's like, one, don't look at where I am right now because this is like, or whoever it is, whoever's practicing this or whatever, just think like where you are right now, that if you brought changes into your life, what type of positive things would come into your life? And let's just start there for a minute to see what that conversation sounds like. What prompted you finally after, how much time did it take of an investigation looking into Islam that it prompted you finally to accept it, that this is the truth? Yeah, well, you know what? I think in my heart of hearts, I knew it, man. Like I knew, like I was young. And it's a trip because, you know, the whole kind of social, political reality that's, that's still happening in the Middle East was happening then. It was just happening in Iran, right? So like my cousin is talking to me about Islam. It's the late 70s. And they're burning effigies of the president. It's Reagan at that time. They're burning the American flag and, you know, and all these types of America's the great Shaytan and blah, 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 and mm. all of that rhetoric. And people are saying, well, that's Islam, right? And, and now, you know, it's, it's, that's what my family is kind of seeing and saying, well, if that's what this thing is, then I don't want you moving towards that direction. Yeah. Um, but in my heart of hearts, I'm like, I'm thinking this is, this is truth, man. This is truth. Like, I'm doing my own exploration about prophets, alayhi wa salam, Allah bless all of them. And, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, this, this, this works out, man. Like, the, the math works on this one, you know what I mean, about the Prophet Islam being the, the seal, of, seal of the prophets. And so, you know, it, it, I'm walking, I'm actually walking around New York City making la ilaha illallah. Just walking around saying that, like you it's know, already on my, your tongue. Cause my now. cousin, yeah, because my cousin taught. It. He's like, you know, there's this, there's this. I'm going to teach you this, and m my hope is that you will not leave this world except for that you believe in this. La it's, ilaha illallah. He just, he just, and you were saying it now. I was saying it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and in the midst of all of that confusion, in the midst of all of the partying, the midst of all of that crazy life, like I'm, I'm actually walking around New York saying this. Now, is this before you officially took your shahada? Yeah. Yeah, years oh. before. I mean, I'm talking, this is, yeah, this is years before. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a catalyst. I mean, this part, just saying this, and now yeah, I slowly think so. it was... it was uh, Putting light. Yeah, yeah. I, we were in South Africa. We were driving, and I remember, like, like the windshield wipers stopped working. We pulled the fuse out of, like, the cigarette lighter, put it in. There, it was this really dense fog. We were driving from Cape Town to Johannesburg. I mean, it was fog. Like, I couldn't see you. I couldn't see the halfway down the hood of the car. 
The fog was yeah. that dense. Combine that now without having any windshield wipers. So I'm in the car. I'm driving for like two hours in this state. I know that there's a ravine because you drive on the, on the opposite side of the road in South Africa. I know there's a ravine on my left-hand side. And the whole time I'm driving, the person next to me is like, what are you saying? What, what, are, you, what are you saying? I said, oh, I'm praying. Don't worry. We'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and alhamdulillah, we made it out. And there was a horrific accident like in front of us. Yeah. Anybody can try right now at home. La ilaha illallah. It's like you're pretty much, obviously the standard tra uh, translation is nothing worthy of worship except the creator. That's right. But you're pretty much saying, I love you the most. That's right. You know, uh, above right. everything. Yeah. Above the money, above the car, everything. I love yeah. you the most. Yeah. The one who yeah. created me. Above, and that's a beautiful way to put it. That's a really beautiful way to put it. Because now it prioritizes things. I think that's the thing right now. What are, where, what are our priorities? The next iPhone, the next car, the next, you know, whatever it is, the next laptop, the next whatever it is. What's the, what's the priority? Like if those are the things that we're chasing, then trust me, you're just a hamster on the wheel, man. They got you. You're just going around and going because it's always going to be the next best thing. Now, I'm not saying we don't look to have those things in our lives, but they're not a priority. They don't define who I am. I think that's what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is this is uh, this is amazing because this is what what we've seen uh, over the years talking with people is that the uh, the simple message of Islam, the theology of Islam, and the, the the moral upright message, you know, the the call of just making you the best human being that you can be. Islam has that blueprint. Yeah, I love that idea of this whole thing. To me, is making you a better version of yourself, mm -hmm. day one day at a time. Yeah. You know, and I think that's it. And that's the other aspect that I wanted to say when you asked me that question before about talking to people is that's it. We're not looking for like, you know, uh, just uproot everything. And that can be pretty traumatic. I so here's a story for you. I meet two. I meet a, a brother. I'm in South Africa. So I took my Shahada in South Africa. And he gives me a Quran and he's like, you know, read this. Surah Yasin and read this Surah Al Mulk. Read Yasin when you get up in the morning and read Mulk when you go to bed in, at night. And I and I promise you that you'll see good in your life. You know, so he. Well, this is actually before we back it up a little bit. We meet. We drive to Joburg. We drive to Johannesburg. We meet. We have coffee. And he's like, you know, a, a mutual friend introduced us, and was like, you know, what do you know about, what do you know about Islam? And I was like, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. And he's like. You're Muslim. And and I was like, you know, I'm not. He's like, why not? I said, because I do all kinds of things that Muslims, you know, don't do. Yeah. You know, so he's like, OK, well, you're close to Islam. And I mean, to me, that was because I wanted to be Muslim. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I wanted that. So that meant a lot. Now, here's the thing. I meet his brother and his brother is like. You know, so I get to Cape Town. I meet his brother, and his brother is like, "Salam alaikum, alaikum salam. How are you doing? Yeah, is it good?" He says, "You know, um, you know, what do you do?" And I said, "The times so I'm working as a fashion model." He's like, "You have to quit your job." And I'm, he's like, "Well, where do you live?" I said, "I rent a room and a house." Um, he said, "Are there women that live there?" I said, "Yeah, there are." You know what I mean? <laughs> going through a and checklist then, now. Yeah, goes through the whole checklist. Then he's like, "You need to move out. You know, you can go to a masjid and stay in a masjid for three days. It'll be your rights." I'm not even Muslim. Uh -huh. I'm not even Muslim. And he's telling me, you know, trusting God. He brings up the whole battle of Badr and all of these things like this. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking to myself, man, if I'm not even Muslim, and this is this, I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm like, yeah, okay, wa alaikum salam. I ain't never become a Muslim, man. Yeah. So it's really interesting. Too like, much the, weight now. Too much weight, man. And just to, like, who can make that upheaval? You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? This is, this is I'm coming out of like living in New York and London yeah. and Paris and all this other stuff. And all of a sudden, like overnight like that, I'm going to, um, you know. One step at a time. One step yeah. at a time. You know what I mean? Allow people to have their space to grow. in. Now, I'm not saying that everything is, you know, unicorns and butterflies and our dean has no yeah. parameters. But I'm just saying at least understand contextually who you're dealing rather than try to put a cookie, cookie cutter on every single person. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, what would you say f to convince us? So, because this is uh, this is something that if you can convince someone uh, that uh, Prophet Muhammad was like Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and all the uh, messengers that came before him, him just being the last and final messenger, and there's a, mm -hmm. there's a ton of evidence, there's mm -hmm. a ton of proof, because obviously mm -hmm. you don't just surrender into this blindly. I mean, it's based on evidence, authenticity. Everything is there that one needs to know that indeed he's a messenger from the Creator, and he came with a 
uh, a message that's clear, it's believable, and has a ton of evidence. What are a few things that you like to mess that share to convince someone or have a plant a seed to have someone really thinking to take the matter serious that he is indeed who he claimed he was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think I think that one is just you know if you are affirming the logical, I'm sorry, the the chronological order of prophets, you know, Allah be pleased with all of them. Um, and you were okay in each one of those transitions, what stopped you from examining this one, right? Is it a theological issue or is it something else? And I think that's really the impasse right now. Like I can accept a transition from Musa alayhi salam to Isa alayhi salam, but for some reason from Isa alayhi salam to Muhammad alayhi salam, like I can't, I couldn't accept that. So me, the I actually put the onus back on you to say why, mm -hmm. why? Right. And it normally it comes down. There's some sort of information that you've received that normally isn't correct, you know. And and I think that, you know, again, if we get into, you know, obviously we have Dr. Ali Ataya at Zaytuna, who's I mean, have you seen his Jesus in the uh, in the Quran and other he, he really his work is 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 incredible on on biblical uh, on the biblical texts and he speaks Hebrew he speaks Greek um, mm -hmm. he's, he's beginning in, in Aramaic quite strong meaning that he has access to the texts and when you begin to get at these things about Pericletus and you begin to get about these to these things you know it's affirmed in the Quran that Isa alayhi salam is talking about a prophet that will come after him and Pericletus it's talked about you know what I mean the, in, in, in the, um, the book of um, um, uh, forgive me it's one of the Gospels. There, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not uh, the book of John. I'm not sure, but d don't quote me on that. But but anyway, this mentioning here of uh, of of you know this um, you know messenger that will come after me. Why and how ha are people not allowed to actually examine that? Yeah. So to me, here's the thing: if I have truth, right? I don't care what you want. Come, bring everything, man. So, so, so I'm not going to hide things from you. That means, you know what? I'm not certain in my truth. So to me, that's the question, right? If we don't have access to this, why not? Right? Why not? So now we'll begin to have access to it. And I would say that's one thing. But also, I would say, look at the lifestyles that people that are living. Not so, don't give me some crazy like ISIS, blah, 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 all this other nonsense, man. But look at the people like in your neighborhood, man. And look how they're, they're, I mean, you know, these types of things that influence people to make just incredible decisions. Taxi driver, New York Times had a story on him. Uh, he returned a bag that had like $10,000 in yeah, it. Somebody that, taxi yeah. driver. Remember that? And like Mercedes gave him Mercedes Benz because honesty and integrity and these types of things that they pride themselves on as a company. To me, that, that, that reality that translates from 1430, you know, 1440 years ago into human beings right now, I mean, how many other philosophies have existed and we don't even see them around anymore? But yeah. two, we don't see the type of conviction that we have inside of it. That's another aspect to ask people to look at. The sponsor for that was Islam. Yeah, exactly. That's from the teachings of Islam. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get your reaction. We're going to do a little reaction video. Okay. We'll watch it and okay. then see what, uh, what your thoughts are. Okay. Come here. You hate Jesus. You hate yourself. You hate me. You disgrace Jesus. Huh? Ha. Francis, watch out, Piggy. Come on, bitch. Come on, You open my room. Now, the f you get this. Hey, Jesus. 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 He has his Christ. Jesus. Francis, you Piggy. Toka, toka, mbele ake. Toka, toka, toka. I am not going to tolerate no more. Jesus is not going to tolerate me. Yeah, feel me. F you're God now. Yes, sir, I know you do. No, no, no. You obey what I say. I don't obey you. You understand? Big neither big Look at me. Look at Christ who died for you. Look, look at me. Look at Christ who died for you. Look at Christ. You come up. I don't calm down. You come up to the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you goddamn ought to be afraid. Be it.
Nigger, be you're not a human. No, no, then you come fight me. Yes, knock your in the name of Jesus Christ. Your God has come under, come under our condemnation. You for that. What are your first thoughts? Yeah, I mean, well, I, the context, I, I mean, first of all, I'm thinking, like, is it, I, and I'm hoping that it's like a mental health issue, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like my first hope. Uh, secondly, you know, what I see there is, is his white supremacy, right? The things that he said to him, you're not a human, you know, I mean, this is stuff that we've heard before. Uh, two is then he uses religion to then to then affirm what he's saying. He's hijacking now Christianity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and you know it it's it's really interesting just 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 watching that because I don't know what what the context are those other people Christian are they not Christians I don't I don't know what that Yeah, we what, don't know what, if they're what, the actual Muslim. He didn't yeah, say that. Yeah, exactly. But, um, so it doesn't seem like it's a Muslim. It's just a it's a black white thing. To me, that's what initially. That's what I. That's yeah. what that's that's what I. That's what I. Th that's what I think, and that's what I see. Yeah, yeah. I start to think my wheels start t turning, and I and I think of uh, Malcolm X when yeah. he wrote the letter. Yeah. And he said the truly, I mean, without a doubt, you know, there's no system out there that clearly, you know, is so adamant about eliminating this race problem like Islam. Yeah. yeah. The solution, like he said. Yeah. This yeah. is what has me that goes, goes through my mind. Yeah, no, it's interesting. There was a pastor that said the most segregated hour in 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 the country is uh, 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 church on Sundays. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when 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 services are happening, mm -hmm. because every Koreans have their own churches, blacks have their own churches, whites have their own churches, and so you know, I, this is something that I feel again like. It was interesting. I saw something the other day. It said the um, it said the 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 solution to um, fascism is education, and the solution to racism is travel. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that there's this idea that you know, if you're only around people like you, then yeah, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna think like that. So and that's a beautiful thing. Like when you go into our masajid, I mean, everybody. Everybody, man. Color, all different, all different colors, races, nationalities. Colors, nationality. We have, just uh, in, in 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 Oakland, it was like um, a Burmese iftar, a Vietnamese iftar, uh, uh, a Nigerian iftar. A you know, I mean, obviously there's the Daisy iftar, the hat, but I'm just saying, I mean, there's like four or five different ethnic groups sponsoring an iftar inside of the masjid, right? So now, you know. Yeah, it's just it's just deep. I mean, yeah. I <laughs> yeah, that's that, I don't know. I mean, that, that's I, I um, it's it's hard even watching that. It's kind of yeah. it makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, very. Uh, it was very, to, yeah. very not unlike oh, I'm uncomfortable. I'm I, I'm uncomfortable <laughs> start, about like. But we bring this up because this is the reality we're living in. This is yeah. what's really. This is not one video. They're just popping yeah. up all over the place. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times you see this hypocrisy where people, they'll point out this fringe element, you know, the insane yeah. state, and they'll try to make Muslims yeah. look yeah. like, you know, yeah. violent and barbaric, even though the data shows and statistically, this That's is right. just, you That's know, right. uh, this is a, a... There was a professor, Stanley Fish, I think his name is. He's right next to where we are yeah. in Zaytuna. He wrote an entire book on that, Are Muslims More Violent? I think it was called. Uh -huh. And he Stan flattened flattened the argument with, I got with that data. I got that statistic of uh, uh, more Muslims, less murder. That statistic of mm -hmm. 100,000. Oh, and that's right, per capita. Per capita, and it comes down to like 2.7 percent Muslim majority countries, as opposed to, you know, here you have it's like three times more murder, right? Mm -hmm. So they flip this, but now I'm seeing this is like the, this is like the, the white, and when I say white, I mean, I'm white, I'm mm -hmm. Muslim, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be Italian, Polish, whatever it is, but People like this, if he's truly following the, I think of exactly. uh, something that's um, yeah. connected to Jesus, where one came to Jesus and said, and this is the Gospel of Matthew, said, oh, good master, what the good thing can I do that I may have eternal life? And Jesus said, why are you calling me good? There's none good but God, right? And then he said, if one wants to enter to paradise, Jannah, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, to the, he said, one keeps, must keep the commandments. Then it goes on. He said, what are they? He said, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery, uh, bear false witness, uh, and the list goes on. Of the same thing that's in yeah. Islam. Mm -hmm. But then he said, he said, and love your neighbor like you love yourself. Look at that. That's right. So if you're a true Christian, and that's we want right. people to be really, pra if you're going to be a Christian, be a true Christian, right? Right. And because this is not a true Christian, right? Oh, so this a new, true human being. True human being. <laughs> so this is like that white. I, this is the white Christian ISIS that we're st yeah. scary. You're starting to yeah. see more yeah. of this come come up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's really interesting. It's really like you said. I'm not. I'm not like I said uncomfortable in that the the term that's being thrown around all the way now. Like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. No, I like like. First of all, I'm thinking like you know how's my man gonna respond? You know yeah. what I mean? And he's responding like a Christian. He's on some like turn the other cheek. Yeah, he's, right? he's doing he's, it. Yeah. He's doing it. So it's really interesting here. You're seeing that he's yeah. claiming and he's acting. Yeah. So we can make all the claims that we want. Live it, man. Yeah. Live it. Ha, ha, have you have you have you seen because I mean the data shows you have Islamophobia is like, you know, now these um they've uh, again with the with the amount of attacks now on masjids, mm -hmm. on Muslims, you know, it's like five percent five hundred percent increase. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think just recently they had an article of how many um, uh, Muslims have been attacked and that. Uh, how, how, how have you guys there in California? And you know, Alhamdulillah, uh, Tabarakallah, from the grace and mercy of Allah, we, we haven't experienced that. You know, I think there is this kind of live and let live and tolerate kind of leftist Berkeley progressive. Um, and that's where we that's where we are. Um, you know, and and I think you know, well, I just say, you know, alhamdulillah, we, you know, there have, there was some, some instances on campus, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But again, it sounds like me, and I'm not trying to write them off, but it did sound like there were kind of some mental health issues. But I mean, definitely there are, you know, obviously you had this Milo, Milo Yiannopoulos who was, you know, fighting to come to campus and talk his talk. He's a and, big uh, yeah. Islamophobe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that whole Breitbart crew, yeah. you know, and, and, um, you know, so you actually had that. Um, but again, you know what I see this as? I see these guys as opportunists, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's just a new way to make money. I mean, Pam Geller is making, you know, what is it, 120000 off of her blog or something like this. It's big you know business, I mean? not bashing It's a big Islam. business, man. Yeah. And, it's, and for those who apostate from Islam, mm -hmm. it's big business, man. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and every think tank's looking to grab you up, and as long as you've got the story that I would. And then, and then come to find out, what do their families say? Dude was never in Hamas. Dude, you know, he didn't even pray. He was like a secular Muslim who had no connection to the Which guy is this? this? I forget. Uh, what, Walid Shalat or something like that, whatever his name is. I mean, you can Google it. One of these guys that, that pop up and then yeah. they take him as, as if he's yeah, like he's representing... Yeah, he's, he's advising Ray Kelly, like the New York you know, uh, police commissioner and these types of things. Yeah. When you dig and do your due diligence on these individuals... That's the scary thing that they don't bring in someone like you. They don't bring in someone like you know a representative from you know the the Muslim community, a, a scholar, or someone who who is going to come in and teach law enforcement. They they have some of these. They've uh, this is the scary thing in many of the law enforcement agencies. They have a lot of these Islamophobes teaching their classes. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I think and I think so. At that point, then you're not looking for a solution. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and because then you've put in everyone's in the minds of these cadets or whoever they are that that everyone that 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 everyone's a potential threat. Yes. That everyone's a potential threat who's a Muslim. And it was really interesting. I was I was I was looking the other day. I was reading something uh, on the plane the other day, and it was talking about how even just the West has shifted in its in its kind of you know the the hijab was kind of like this like the idea of the harem and it was exotic and they sexualized yeah. it and you yes, know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how it was kind of portrayed. Now it's like, you know what I mean? This it's 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 a it's seen as like um, leaning towards violence and anyone the that hijab. would put the, yeah the anyone hijab. that would put because a woman because of this whole idea about conviction yeah as you become more religious right religiosity br it brings you to this place of violence and I'm like yeah. that's so insane that's insane I yeah. can bring you I mean I just like I said I've lived about ten years in the Middle East. My experience has been complete opposite of that, and that's just and that's traveling through the Middle yeah. East, not just in one country, one group of people. Yeah, but I see that that that's a lack of knowledge of like this person, a little bit of knowledge of Christianity. That's right. 
and now what happens, right? That's right. He he's becomes a zealot. He becomes a fanatic and extremist. Uh, maybe a little bit of knowledge of Islam, right? right. With uh, probably more turn into extremists with you know all of the uh, violence that's happening in his in uh, our, our own country. But that's more right. Islam helps to humble you to become a better human being, the best version of yourself that uh, you were saying. Hundred percent. And I mean that's the whole thing too. I mean, this whole argument about you know uh, killing the non-Muslims and both. I mean, what? I'm gonna take shahada and then like go kill my family as, <laughs> as my really right from like. <laughs> Like that's my duty now as a Muslim. I mean, it's just insane. Like that you, it's insane that you would actually believe that. But that's the that's the, exactly what you're it's it's insane that you would actually believe that. I want to show since you brought up the hijab. This is uh, let me get your uh, your reaction to this one, since you you mentioned the hijab. So mm -hmm. this is a popular. Someone shared this with me. And let's see what you think about this. Stays true to her signature style and reveals why she keeps her body covered up. I never want the world to know everything about me. I mean, that's why I wear big baggy clothes. Nobody can have an opinion because they haven't seen what's underneath, you know? Nobody can be like, oh, she's, she's slim thick. She's not slim thick. She's, <laughs> she got a flat ass. She's got a fat ass. No one can say any of that because they don't know. Guys, I love that. Billy is seriously just breaking the mold and doing it her own way. She wants people to focus on the fashion and not her figure. How in general would you describe your style? I want to see heads look up. Style has always been something I care about. <laughs> you were talking about hijab. <laughs> Not totally, but yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about the meaning of it, yeah. you know, the hijab, like to cover something, yeah. then yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, it that's it, yeah, it, it just seems like you know, many people that's why it's so important, dawah, education, because it seems like the fitra, the, the, the natural state of the human being, I mean, gets corrupted, the environment, you know, our surroundings, but mm -hmm. it's, it's just inside of us, and you just need, once Islam comes, it fits like a glove. Now it mm -hmm. gives you that blueprint, you know? That's right. So you can see her kind of going toward that. She don't want people to m measure her by her body, but by her intelligence. That's right. She's, she's, she's doing something uh, a little above and beyond what everybody's doing. Yeah, and it's, but it's interesting, though, of how someone like that is 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 applauded and and praised for it but yeah. yet how many muslim women are doing are this doing, every day yeah. and would probably say you know 70 percent or whatever obviously it's for allah and it's yeah. just following a commandment like this but would actually say those same things as well too i'm not yeah. interested in you observing me in a way that i don't want to be observed by you so, right? so billy h she's like have you ever heard of her i didn't know no, no, she's no, like no. the new thing now okay uh so she's like Bi the new britney spears or something? yes uh, billy h i guess she's real popular so now she's like you just said it's like she wants to cover up show less wearing baggy clothes yeah, right and yeah this is pretty much that's islam not revealing the shape of hijab not revealing the shape of your yeah. your body but on top of that having been just a good human being good moral uh, character and whatnot mm -hmm. but now you said if as soon as if she would have said islam muslim been shot down exactly <laughs> what? Uh, right <laughs> then, then look at the comment section when lindsay lohan or whatever her name was yeah. said that she took shot right? She's, right she's suffering from mental illness all these other things where she mm -hmm. came on and said i'm covering my body because I, you know it's just it's just wild like basically wow yeah you can be liberated but on our terms not islam yeah exactly right? right you have to be liberated on our terms and we'll determine what liberation looks such like such hypocrisy for you. Man, exactly you think about exactly it. but the beautiful thing about though is that people aren't stupid yes people are not stupid you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, you can have, as Sheikh Hamza says, you can have your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Mm, you can have your own opinions, you but, can have your own opinions your own. but you're not entitled to your own facts. Mm -hmm. So she's telling you, you know what I mean? This fact about me, we can form any opinion we want. That fact remains with her. The fact of what Muslims are doing, you can have your opinion all day. The fact will remain the fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you you had this whole you have the the Me Too movement and and mm -hmm. whatnot. Recently, we were, we were talking about it. This is this is another point, like uh, that Islam has all these solutions, and now many of these big corporate uh, giants know. and whatnot. Now yeah. they're implementing what you would think, like, wow, this is what Islam says. Yeah, you know how to interact yeah. with the opposite gender and whatnot right. for the protection of the woman and yeah. And now yeah. they're actually implementing these yeah. things. But it's interesting how it has to run this whole <laughs> cycle and go through being called patriarchal and all of these other things. But at the end of the day, you're going to come to the same conclusion, right? And so, but again, it's on our terms, yeah. <laughs> as I think it is. And I think to me, that's a major problem. Like, I, I'm not, you know, like, I don't think, I don't know. It's just, I was just talking to a student the other day about this idea of what is it, like, 
is is the issue like a theological issue or is the issue one of like autonomy? Because I think in the in 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 the, in the United States, of course, like this whole idea about you know freedom and liberty and and individualism and i think now if one um affirms that there's a god now all of a sudden i have to be like bound to those rules like i'm no longer like the top of the chain like the top yeah. of the pyramid so to speak right yeah. there's someone that i have to and i think that's a that that becomes a problem for 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 people uh, w one of the people that uh, i benefited you know and this doesn't take anything away from him you know mm -hmm. tony robbins right mm -hmm. of course he got caught up in this scandal also mm -hmm. and i don't i don't really i mean uh, there's different levels to this in islam is just another level so obviously mm -hmm. and i think i mean any man you cannot just this is the nature of man you know someone who is who is at his level just like you you are at, in a mm -hmm. different world mm -hmm. you're still he's a good i mean he's he's yeah. striving striving yeah. to educate people and 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 he has some really some some good uh some good things in place that uh, that if you implement it can it can help you get to another level islam just takes you to the whole yeah. you know yeah. the the yeah. top of the levels but what happened w with uh, with tony was again now Imagine if you're in the situation, you're probably doing the same thing. You mm -hmm. know, he's calling out the most, he's got the most beautiful women there. Mm -hmm. He's calling the most mm -hmm. beautiful women to be with him. This is the mm -hmm. nature of man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What mm -hmm. do you expect from the, you mm -hmm. know, but the, the hypocrisy of society, now they want to like, like uh, my, uh, take him under a microscope and just dismantle him and whatnot. But I'm like, Tony, look, Islam has the solutions. You want more? You can get an extra families, right? <laughs> right. Uh, it just tells you don't be alone, you know, uh, with the opposite mm -hmm. gender because mm -hmm. there's a chemistry. There's a, there's a wise saying that I'd rather be alone. A uh, wise man said I'd rather be alone with a suitcase of money than a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. And the proof mm -hmm. is actually in the Quran. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the Creator is telling us. Uh, That's right. You know, the thing that 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 excites man the most. Yeah, yeah. You know, the hubu yeah. You know what I mean? It's exactly but, the desires. I mean, what, yeah. the, what, what do you think about it? Well, I, I don't know. I think I think. I think there's been such a deconstruction on so many levels. We're talking about the deconstruction of of of, of gender now. Of, w w you know, now you said like a man's desires. Now that becomes a problem. You can't really say that now. Maybe even just man, you can't say that either. That's problematic. <laughs> That's crazy. So then you have this idea of like you're liberated once you fulfill your desires. Be you. You know what I mean? And I think this is do you or whatever that you know people say. But to me, that's what leads to the type of um, um, collapse, really, I feel like, the collapse that we're seeing right now. I mean, we've never seen a level of mental health and suicide and of the numbers that we're seeing right now. And I'm sorry. I think that what happens is that once you set someone on a path that, that, that can never be fulfilled, mm -hmm. right? It's the moving on to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. So if you get to that continuing, well, I've done this, well, I've done this, I've done this. I, well, what's left? Yeah. Well, what, what, if, if all of this is leaving me empty, then what's the sense and purpose of living? Yeah. Right? And I think that's where these ideas are coming into, um, you know, of questioning existence at that point. And we're like, yeah, if, 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 if you have no teleos, if there is no kind of end to this thing, then yeah. Just keep, just keep, you know, being a consumer in a world that is set up for financial gain and to keep you a consumer. And I think to me, that's why you see why the Malcolms and why the Dr. Kings and why others were such a problem, because they're speaking against that narrative. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously race is the context that it's set in. But if you look at Dr. King's work at the end, where he's talking about, you know, the big three, where he talks about, you know, incarceration uh, and war and then and, 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 and racism, you know, that's, that's, you know, another area that we don't want to talk about, you know, mm -hmm. the military industrial complex and other things such as this. Yeah. How long have you uh, been into eating the, from when you be became Muslim, practicing Islam, were you always, well, obviously, yeah, you had to stay fit. So you, were you eating tayyibat back then? Uh, before before yeah. being Islam, yeah. before being Muslim? No, I, you know, I, I wasn't, I, I think I've always, I, you know, we grew up on processed foods, you know, yeah. and, uh, but I, I never liked it, you know, I know, nothing against my mother, obviously, she's a yeah. great cook, but with like these like soggy, like string beans, because they've been in a can. And I mean, I just, you know, that whole transition that happens from like the post-war, you know, industrialization of food to sh for shelf lives. And now we're being fed those same types of things. Like I'm not I'm not interested in that. And so I think what happens with this shift is that 
um, you know, you just have this this idea. Not only does it not taste good, but you'll like tolerate it not tasting good. But then when you begin to kind of look at like nutritional value and how then that relates to like output, like what you can do either on a physical level or like on a cognitive level. Like once you begin to cross that, you're like, oh no, this, <laughs> I'm not going, you know what I mean? I, 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 and here's the thing for me, the thing that really turned the corner for me was like, it wasn't about law, it wasn't about, you know it was about? It was about love. Mm -hmm. Like how much do I love my children? Mm -hmm. And will I express my love in this way? And that's really the thing that like the lights went on. Yeah. So that was it. You're actually at another level. You actually hunt your, hunt for your own food. and Yeah. I mean, I'm not a sustenance hunter. A sustenance mm -hmm. hunter is defined by someone who mm -hmm. only eats what they hunt. Yeah. Um, so I'm not on that level. But for me, you know, <clears throat> I just got tired of like people complaining all the time of how bad the halal meat is at the markets, right? Yeah, yeah. I get it. Like, you know what I mean? I, it's pretty horrific. I wrote my graduate thesis on this. I know what I, I know kind of what we're talking about. I've seen it. I've seen it in Mecca. What, are, made, we what are we talking about? What, yeah, exactly. But so I got, I got, I got to this point where I'm like, I'm just tired of people complaining. So that's why I started that hashtag: Get your own halal. Get your own halal. Huh? Right. So you go out and get it then, right? Go, yeah. And if you can't hunt, okay, that's one level. Go make a relationship with a farm, man. Go make a relationship with a farmer. How about that? How about he's introduced now to the beautiful manner in which we, you know, harvest a uh, 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 an animal? How we slaughter. An animal, right? And then all, then you begin to learn the prophetic ethics that are uh, concerned with the humane taking of this animal's life. And then the next level on that is how you honor that animal through the energy that you will use to do things. So work righteousness through that meat. Now you've honored that animal. Mm -hmm. Work things that are displeasing to the creator. You've dishonored that animal. Mm -hmm. And but but so yeah, to get to that point, you know. It, when we look at this, you know, the Sharia sets a pretty low standard in terms of halal, like in terms, like legally. You basically have to have three things. You have to have the, um, the, 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 the tool in which you are using to slaughter, the manner in which a person slaughters, and then, you know, um, and then really the religious uh, uh, status of the person slaughtering. Yeah. If you meet those three things, Halas, the thing's halal. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we're at right now yeah. because we've become a hyper legalized community and we've removed the ethics because it complicates things or it makes things difficult or, it, you know what I mean? The dean is easy. Okay, yeah, the dean is easy, but you're eating something that's pumped with hormones, you know, antibiotics, all these other things, abused, physically abused. And just because you said Bismillah when you cut the neck of it, now all of a sudden it's supposed to, you know, fulfill the highest standard of it. No, I'm sorry, it doesn't, man. Yeah. It, it it completes the law, you know what I mean? But in terms of these higher standards of what people, and then that's when you get this idea about, well, can I eat non-halal meat, but at least it's 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 grass-fed, it's humane, it's being, I can't find anything in our tradition that was gonna say to you that legally you can eat meat that did not meet the conditions for halal or was from people of the book. I think a lot of people, they don't understand it, and much talk and um, importance is not giving in distinguishing, okay, you have halal, but yeah. now taibat, like yeah. Coca-Cola might be halal, you can yeah. drink it, but it's not taibat. Yeah. People don't know the difference. Right, and I think, you know, the, the, the interesting thing here is that there's one level just for the, you know, what what it does to your body, that's mm -hmm. one level. But I think what the Prophet Islam, as you begin to read into it more, his concern extends also to to the animal. Like there's a hadith that said, you know, he walked by an animal that was very thin. You could like see its ribs and its yeah. backbone and like this. And he said, ride them when they're healthy and slaughter them when they're healthy, right? So now, um, this you is know, from Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad, yes, yeah, is teaching, right? And so you have now consideration. I, I, I think, brother, I think it goes all the way out to like, here's the thing. No one will argue that strawberries are ha like halal haram. That everyone yeah. said you're crazy, right? But now if you want to talk about tayyib and you didn't take into consideration like, okay, why is it that there's a higher percentage of cancer 
and people who are picking the strawberries because of the 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 the, the, art, the carcinogenics uh, that are inside of the pesticides that are being used, and those people are not allowed to have access to health care like other people are, and their children are not allowed to have edu access to education as other because they're undocumented workers and they're picking our strawberries as a Muslim who's going to be rah, 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 social justice, rah, 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 Black Lives Matter, rah, 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 on my social justice bandwagon, but yet I won't look at food, my intake on that. I'm sorry, man, you've missed the point. You've missed the point. You've made it very convenient for yourself, right, in certain areas, and you're dismissing certain areas that are very clear. And I think as we begin to adopt that as a community, now we've begin to kind of be more comprehensive in our dean, mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the end of the day, what I'm finding over and over again, brother, is we're only concerned with like money. Like how much does it cost? Yeah. Does it cost less? Cool, I'll take it. Go over, go back, rewind. What, what's going on with the strawberries now? No, I'm just saying, so, so, so. You have, this is actually happening. It's actually happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like tomato, Immokalee, Florida, like where yeah. most of our tomatoes come from. Yeah. They're picked by undocumented workers. Yeah. They don't have access to health care. Their children don't have access to education in the way that they should, right? But as Muslims, we're not even taking that into consideration. We're just like, khalas, give me the, give me the food. Yeah. So what I'm saying in terms of tayyib, if we're talking about being ethical consumers, we're looking at this thing all the way up and all we're supporting yeah. the companies that are doing it right. And we're not supporting and putting our dollars behind companies that are not doing it right. Mm -hmm. To me, that's that's really how this thing, you know, plays out. So yeah, when you're spraying Roundup and you're spray, yeah, spraying exactly. these these, these uh, chemicals, Monsanto, so give me a break, man. Yeah, then they just change it to bear, and they're also. Uh, um, you met you mentioned something last time we spoke. You mentioned how when the Creator, God Almighty Allah, when when he when he made something, it's in a fine tuning. As soon as you 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 add or delete, you you take it out of its. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know precision mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you remember what you told me yeah I, I, I'm a little bit but I think that I, remind me again is exactly what I mean because Some I think par paraphrase mm -hmm. you were mm -hmm. talking about when, when the creator when Allah when he creates something you know yeah. what I mean yeah and this was relating back to GMO changing the creation uh -huh. of, of God yeah of Allah. yeah that's right yeah this is the verse where you read you know what I mean that they are desirous to change the creation of Allah this is a yeah. verse that's in the Quran um, and it's it's connected to something else however you could make an analogy an analogous qiyas it's called right in 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 terms of this of the law but but you know i think because here's the thing you know all of these promises that were made to the indians i mean you know about this you know these these gmo crops that were supposed to be super crops and all of these other things but what they didn't tell them was how much water it would take for example right so now um they can't pay for the amount of water that's required for for irrigation of these plants so now the crops die and you don't have access to the seeds. Now they're out, they're in debt, and they're actually, there's suicide that's happening. They're actually drinking, you know, the things that they should be spraying on their plants and all this other stuff as a result because of the debt that they've incurred and other things such as this. So it's just a vicious cycle. And I think that, you know, when you look at permaculture, when you look at, you know, these types of approaches, what Bill Mollison is, is, is you know, Jeff Lawton, contemporary, um, David Holmgren, others such as this are promoting and the work that they're doing, I mean, Jeff is being brought into to a lot of these refugee camps and other places and bringing in these structures that work with nature rather than against it. So mm -hmm. that's how I see it. it's like two, two different approaches, like you said earlier in the talk, like when we were talking, right? You have this one that's like working with the harmony of nature. Go and look at what does the decomposition look like when a tree falls and how do things grow out of it and things like there's a natural order that's happening. Mm -hmm. And we come in, we're saying like, no, because we need the crop to yield this much. We want to now contain all of the variables and eliminate all the variables actually, right? And in the process now, we are disrupting, in my opinion, this uh, uh, cycle that God has 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 created for this, yeah. and then we're seeing we're seeing the price. The the people are paying the price for it. What do you think? There's a there's a lot of good hol holistic um, doctors. You know, a, a lot of, of papers have been written on this, but it, it, it kind of goes against the mainstream. It goes against uh, big industry money, and they talk about you know the power of food. Um, many have got one comes to mind. Dr. Kelly uh, Brogan. Uh, she writes extensively on this healing people through nutrition, through mm -hmm. food. She also writes about how many of these medications uh, are creating mental illness, creating people that are out there sh gunning people down, linking it back to the prescription drugs and mental health issues, coming back to uh, to this, uh, what we're talking about, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, all this thing, being connected somehow. Well, here's the thing. This what is, do you think this, about that? Well, this is the thing that I looked at one time. If you take a pill, like, what's the path? 
It goes in, goes into your stomach, and then what happens? It finds its way into your bloodstream, right? Food is the same thing. Mm. So they're, they're the same paths. Yeah. So why is it that this synthetic pill can do what, you know, foods or herbs or other things. I mean, are, are we are we at a point in a society where we are seeing things and dealing with things that other that other gener that other societies didn't have to deal with? And if they were dealing with them in a way that that was using, you know, um, no, I'm not writing off completely allopathic um, uh, 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 medicine. Yes. There are there are some benefits, hundred yeah. percent. But also, I'm not wholeheartedly taking it all in and saying it has the answer for everything. Mm -hmm. I feel that in both of them is good. However, what I will say is that I'm looking to uh, find out where these, where, where uh, and here's the other thing, I think it's two things. One is that, that that's that pathway that I talk about. The second one is I feel that if, 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 if Allah, if Almighty God is, 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 is about mercy, then he's gonna put his mercy in in, in cures that are accessible to everybody, to everybody and yeah. not just people on a certain social economic path. And this is, I'll tell you what, I was taking a, actually it was a wilderness survival course. I was in Maine, I took this course. And uh, poison ivy grows right next to its antidote, which is called jewel weed. Wow. They grow physically, they grow right next to each other. And, and um, but the thing is you have to actually put the jewel weed on before the, the poison ivy hit, you can't put it on after. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing, I actually had a medical student, I told them that, they were kind of like, yeah, I don't know if I really believe you, but I'm Muslim, you know. They ran a test on their arm, 100%. This arm swelled up, inflamed, this arm, absolutely nothing So now at all. they tested it. They tested it, right? Yeah. First, so now here's the thing, yeah. when our instructor was telling us about that, they grow right next to each other, I thought about this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Ma anzal Allah da'an illa bi dawa. Allah doesn't send down a malady except for with its cure. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing. The ba here, illa bi dawa. This ba in Arabic is called the ba of musahiba, right? Literally the companion. So it seemed like, right? Where the Prophet ﷺ say, if a fly falls into your soup, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Dip both wings in, because in one side is the is the is the toxin and the other side the is cure. the cure. Yeah. So here, that's my thought. Right? Allah sends down this thing, right next to it is gonna be its care. Yes. And we're looking for all of these other places. And 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 I'd love to see Muslims research in these areas based off of these, you know what I mean, concepts yeah. that exist inside of our tradition. But this is the thing, if we're people of Sunnah, the way we, we have to have an open mind and we have to because nowadays that they act as this uh, curriculum came down from the divine and you know you probably talk to a lot of doctors they don't learn nutrition in medical school this I just the it, driver that drove me over here today yeah. not driver alhamdulillah like someone from the community yeah. he's a medical student actually he's the last time I was here I stayed with him uh, and he, we had this exact conversation because he's on the same page about this yeah. he's like look I'm in medical school and most of the students that I'm talking about about this gut brain relationship as Dr. Natasha Mc Campbell McBride talks about called gaps, gut and psychology syndrome, this relationship. Um, Dr. Um, you know, Gundry is talking about it, Stephen Gundry is talking about it now. I just a Muslim doctor on, on Instagram just hit me up the other day. He goes by the name of the gut MD. So he saw some of the stuff yeah. that I've been putting up. You know, he said no one. It's like it's like I'm like they're hearing Greek for the first time. We're all medical students. Yeah. Right? He's he's in his rotations right now. He's saying none of them have heard of of this relationship before of 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 the gut and and and, and psychology and, yeah. and but like you said this thing is sent down my wife my, my wife is uh, my wife is trained nine years in damascus um um as a as a as a student of knowledge and now she is uh, she taught at zaytuna for years but now she's a full-time student as a as a midwife yeah um and the same thing you know she met a woman who's a physician who literally like berated her, man. I mean, like, wife was like, wife was so hurt um, because of, you know, the dangers of home birth. Like, are you kidding me? So everyone in civilization up until when you came on the scene was wrong. And now because your statistics and your data will tell us that you can, the infant mortality rates are down and this, that, and the third, like all of a sudden we're just supposed to like, 
give ourselves up at the altar to this and, and, and relinquish all the things that society has been doing up until, up until this point? Are you kidding me? You, you talk about humility, man. How about you show some humility? Just because you've been credentialized doesn't mean that you have all of the answers, my friend. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you said about having an open mind. But I think especially as a Muslim, this was a Muslim doctor she was talking to, yeah. man, broke her heart broke her heart and these are the same people that you go and uh, you know and and you're sitting around you got i mean it's not to put down any doctors it's got to be you got to rise to the next level because there's so much to learn you know what i mean take the good from the allopathic go out there and take the good from chinese medicine from the that's sunnah right. that's right and be the best right. unani but, the greek tradition yeah. you know uh, the the what they call him the father of medicine what's his name um mm -hmm. uh what's his no. name um no, uh, 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 Hippocrates. Uh, yes he said let food be your medicine medicine be your food yeah. hippopathic oath uh, do no harm, but t man, if you look at you know a table full of doctors and some masjids, they're sitting around, you know, drinking Coca Cola, Pepsi, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. eating the fake food, yeah. and now this is the person that yeah. is is what is what has been trained to be, you know, we know what MD stands for, master drug dealer. So he's just pushing the drugs, you know what I mean? It's wild, you know. I I went to, I went I don't know for a checkup or something like this. I can't remember, and I I don't to be full transparency, I don't really. Go to the doctors often. You know, this is what woke me up when I sat with the most healthy, awoken uh, people, and I asked them, "When's the last time you were a doctor?" I thought this is just unconceivable. Yeah. It's yeah. like they said twenty years ago. I said, yeah. "What do you do?" I yeah. watch what I eat. I take care of myself. When I got my job at at Dartmouth, um, this was two thousand and this was two thousand ten, fall of two thousand ten. When I went to get my checkup, HR sends you there. You have to go get a, a medical checkup. The doctor comes back and says, "Mr. Yassin, can I ask you a question?" I said, yeah. He says your medical record show the last time you were at the doctor was fifteen years ago. <laughs> oh, you're right. And I said, uh, "Yeah, that sounds about right." <laughs> and they're just going kind to of blank stare, you know. And I can yeah. say that was that was two thousand ten. We're at nine. So another nine years. Honestly, I've probably been to a doctor, you know. I mean, like having to go to one. Yeah. I, I thought I broke my toe. I, mean, I had to get my meniscus. I tore my meniscus. Yeah, and, there's and, certain you know, cases you like, have to yeah. go. That's where, but in like, terms of just is that like the best, yeah, going because I thought I was sick. I don't know that I've been in the last in in, in nine years. And so, what I was going to say is that the one time that I went in to go get some blood drawn, what yeah. it was, man, the lineup at the pharmacy downstairs was just, I mean, just cats in white coats. I was like, like this looks like Buki and Ray Ray, like out in the block, you know what I mean? Just on another level, man. Yeah. It's insane. CBC's popping up all over the place, everywhere. Legalized yeah. drug pushing. Yeah, man. Yeah. Clocking a bunch of dollars on the 1st and 15th. Yeah, so, that easy, easy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, th I mean, this is, so it comes down, if we can get people, what advice would you have people? It's real simple. I mean, eating the Thai bat that the creator's given, avoiding yeah. fake food, eating real food. Obviously, if there's, you know, an emergency situation, you got to get there. But people just differentiating, I mean, uh, between the two, because you're not going to go uh, to the to the regular doctor and he's going to tell you, you know, uh, give you a prescription on changing some of the, the uh, things in your cupboard and yeah. uh, removing things from your fridge. He's not no, going to, because he's not trained there. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but like the, like that things are connected, right? It's all connected. So here's the thing. Check this out. Lifestyle. Right. So lifestyle one, but two, just even physically. Yeah. So, oh, I've got a pain in my knee. Well, here's, take these, right? No one's telling you that maybe like your, your, your spine is misaligned which cause your shoulders to be misaligned, which cause your hip to be misaligned, which now cause your knee to be misaligned. So all every single step you're taking, it's like if it's supposed to work like this and the joint is just skewed a bit, now how many steps are you taking? It's grinding in the wrong place. You're gonna have a hip pain, but no one's telling you that's because, I mean a knee pain problem, but no one's telling you that your pelvis is tilted and no one is telling you that's because your shoulders are misaligned and no one's telling you that because your spine's misaligned. So now all of a sudden you, begin to like look at chiropractic, you begin to look at acupuncture, you begin to look at um, you know, yoga, you begin to look at um, steam baths, you know, heat, getting in the heat and the ice. And, and so to me, the biggest thing I think right now is this whole issue of, of, of um, prolonged inflammation. When you mention these things, they'll say that, okay, this is unscientific, this is more quackery. What would you say? That's right. I, I, proof is in the pudding, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like but here, when you flip that, but a lot of this stuff that is there, there's no science behind much of the things that are going on nowadays. But yeah, I mean, here, you know. And we, there's in over the hundred years, there's nothing actually been cured. But I think it's confirmation bias. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. Like I think when you have, you know, your the malpractice insurance is so high, then there's 
you know, a, a number that you have to meet per day. And this is from someone who left the practice. So they just, they, they can, I can't, I can't take care of patients in this way, basically. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I'm, I'm done. You know what I mean? She had her own practice with, with, with someone else and just said, you know, the pace that I'm bound to because of, because of our malpractice insurance and those numbers, basically I think what it is is like seven minutes or something like that, mm -hmm. that she was, I think she said it was like you had seven minutes to diagnose with, the a, with a patient, like yeah. full, like from the minute you walk in the door, you have seven minutes. Yeah. So the, hi, how are you doing? Like all that stuff, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's eating, that's eating time. You, you know? can tell by a good doctor the amount of time they spent on the initial visit. I mean, a good doctor, I remember last time I went, they spent like an hour and a half, at least minimum. Mm -hmm. and so this is more of a, a, a yeah. doctor that's holistic minded, yeah. who's really looking enough to manage the symptom, but looking for the, for the root problem. I mean, this is a, just a classic example. Like one of these things that they're talking about, you know, um, um, how, um, like if you don't have the right type of sleep, mm -hmm. that it can affect your blood pressure. Yeah. But if I just come in and be like, oh, wow, you've got high blood pressure. And I ever ask you about your sleeping patterns, right? I'm just going to issue you a pill now. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, I don't, and that's what I'm saying about looking at holistically, like, you know, talk to me. What is it? Are you, you know what I mean? And yeah, there's a checklist. Do you smoke? Do you have mm -hmm. diabetes in your family? Do you have like, okay. But you know what I mean? I just think that there's other factors that are not captured in that, that, you know what I mean? That, 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 it's really interesting. A friend told me this and I, I didn't confirm it, but I think it's just an interesting concept, whether it's true or it's not. He said that there was a time in Chinese medicine where you mentioned this to me. Yeah. Where you paid powerful, your yeah. doctor, right? When you were healthy and you didn't pay him when you were, or her, you didn't pay the doctor when you were, when you were sick. Mm -hmm. Right. Now think about that. If the whole healthcare uh, a project is predicated upon keeping people healthy, what greater motivator is it then that you don't get paid if I'm sick, man? Yeah. That's, that's powerful, right? It's really yeah. powerful, man. Yeah. Amazing. So, wow, we covered a lot. This is, uh, uh, because those are the c key components. I mean, have a healthy heart, you know, mm -hmm. uh, life, it all comes back to lifestyle. That's right. right. Uh, and food, tell you about, you know, eating the good food that the Creator Allah has given us and, and many of these other things, uh, these are components. And if you miss one, and which we, many people are missing uh, two, three of them, four, and this yeah. is the mess that, yeah. that we're in. So inshallah, people can benefit some of these, uh, some of these advices. And I try to push out there uh, what we started with, and you could do it too. We started with La ilaha illallah, and one can start saying it. That's this right. is putting God Almighty, Allah, above everyone That's right. and anything. And you were saying it. La right. ilaha illallah. Look how simple it is. like a lullaby. That's right. La ilaha illallah. Start saying it. La ilaha illallah. And then we talked about uh, the importance of eating real food. There's halal mm -hmm. and there's taib. Taib mm -hmm. is the real. How would you define that? Taib. Yeah, it, it it's a tough word to 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 define. But you know, kind I like of, to say I real like, food. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, pure, pure, is a, pure, is a, pure is a, pure is a, organic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's probably cl closer akin to what we find now of the organic. Free, you know what I mean? Um, humane, yeah. antibiotic-free, hormone-free. It just they didn't have to say all those things because yeah, that was the normal. That was the norm. Right? That was the norm. Yeah. Now we've industrialized it. Yeah. And now we have to call it real food. I mean, that that's, that in of itself is insane. Yeah. Right? W wouldn't you want to eat real food? Doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> just wow. And then uh, and then so and trying to give advice to. Uh, the masjids to get the Coca-Cola out of the masjids. That's huh? right. Get yeah, the fake food out of the masjids. Hundred percent. Actually, that's the other Stop thing. Stop giving kids these candies. Yeah, that, exactly. Give them like some you some know dates. I mean, apricot. Exactly, or just like you know dried mangoes, or you know what I mean. Just like, begin to explore. Yeah. Begin to explore, and then you know just the the brother said that dropped me off. You know, he was talking about. He said he went to a sahur this morning at the masjid, and again, not pounding on masjids, but he was like, look, they gave us like a big thing of Nutella. And and some cereal, <laughs> like some like you know, some sort of like you know lucky charm. I mean not like I was a bit lucky, yeah. <laughs> Fruit Loops or something yeah. like this. And then there was like the like curry, chicken, lamb dishes that like, f I mean subhanallah, like we've I experimented this year. I've had a green smoothie every morning, man. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. So is a green smoothie. And I'm not just like sitting around doing nothing. My day's pretty active, and 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 and. And that gets you, you through, know, huh? Yeah, 
Yeah. 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 And then break it with celery juice. We do we do celery juice, and then we have a, a very simple meal of a protein, uh, a, a salad. And a, and a vegetable. No, yeah. it's like a steamed broccoli or a steamed cauliflower or a big uh, a sweet potato or, or something like that. And then a salad, very simple salad. Um, and and you're good, man. And we've been the whole month, the whole month like that. Equals taibat. Equals taibat. And this is an act of ibadah now. Yeah, because yeah exactly. you'll get rewarded for that because yeah. your intention is to honor your body. That's right. right. You're developing nutritional integrity, honoring this vehicle yeah. that is getting you through yeah. life. You can get rewarded for I it. I love that term, nutritional integrity. This is from my, my nutritionist, Jim Marlow. MashaAllah. Yeah. So uh, this is, I mean, this is just so important. And um, inshallah, this can be a benefit to people because uh, the results are devastating. Cancer, heart disease, all this stems from doing the opposite what Allah told us, eating that's all right. the garbage fake foods yeah yeah and those yeah. Uh, just interesting those cereals that you mentioned they did they did studies that um, uh, glyphosate was in the majority of these major brand cereals and this is one of uh, a leader that's connected to cancer yeah, so you're giving your kids cancer foods and that's why i said when i said what why i said what i said it stems from love now how can you okay even eat where there's smoke there's fire so say it's not to that degree that it's cancer causing but it's something else why would you even think about serving that to your child would you? I, it wouldn't even i mean if i told you that this is going to bring some sort of harm to your child you'd be like get that thing away from me yeah. we're like tafaddal bring it bring give me yeah. give me give me a six pack of it you know parents are this is like a form of child abuse i'm sorry to use such strong language but you see parents projecting their food preferences on these kids. You see these kids over bees. If you look at the, the parent, they're, they're right there with the kids. So they're the ones that, yeah, that are end up abusing their kids in this way. You know, yeah. And I think the thing is, is it's also convenience. Like I get it. And yeah. I'm not trying to knock people or shame people, which is another term that we say today. But however, we have to slow down then. You know what I mean? If that's what it is, like if it's just a microwave meal, I'm going to pop it in like that. Then other things are wrong in my life that I need to address as to why I only have time to pop a microwave meal and, and give that to my child. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 and then, and it's interesting because people will ask us like, you know, oh my God, your kids eat Brussels sprouts and asparagus and artichoke hearts and broccoli and all of those things. You know why? Because we didn't give them those other things in the beginning. And so now it's like someone came to my house and like, oh, my kid will only eat mac and cheese. But if you only gave them mac and yeah. cheese, what so do you the, think? Now all of a sudden they're going to switch to Brussels sprouts? You've, you've got them addicted to the fake foods, to sugar. You made them a sugar addict, yeah. Yeah. Because it's pumped in all these foods. It's exactly. pumped in all of this. It's that's in the there. thing you got to look at. Yeah. Right? And that's, you know, it's really a trip is that those are the two things, the body, you know, the soul, sweet and savory. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, the glucose and sodium. Like those are the things that our bodies crave. Yeah. And so they're not stupid. You know what I mean? And that's why like the milkshake and the sodas are the sugars and then also the sugar in the ketchup and the sugar in the bread and the sugar in the and then the salty is like the fake meat in the McDonald's. They're not. I mean, this is not this is not rocket science. Man. And, and then you go to your sorry to bring up the doctor analogy again, but you go to your average doctor and he says, don't worry about it because yeah. he's eating the same thing. Yeah, teeth. <laughs> All right. Question. So let's close it up. Yeah, we're going to have to do this again. I we mean, cover some I very, look forward very, to very, it. Very, uh, very enlightening and uh, so many different uh, gems here. Uh, so thank you very much. I really very appreciate welcome. it. What My closing? Honor. What else uh, what would you? Do? Where a simple place to start with this? You know, for the person who's seeking purpose now, they heard this, and also linking it back. What final words of closing? Also for the person, there's all these diets, all these trends, and someone's really they tried this and that. They just you know, uh, yeah. I, I like I like to tell people eat real food, avoid fake food. That's white belt level. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. What do you like to tell them? Yeah, I would say that you know, um, one is. You know, if you if you get subbed, right? There's another match. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've 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 met with people and they get all set up and they do all these things, but then they're like, "Hey, I didn't hear from you for a while," and it's almost like they're ashamed to mm -hmm. to call you because maybe they they relapsed or they went back yeah. to these things. It's okay, yeah. right? Because I, the reason why I say it's okay because I take the the the, the principle of our dean. Our dean is redemptive. This whole this whole thing is about you being redeemed. Yeah. from wrongs that we we all wrong ourselves every day we wrong ourselves right and this is just another aspect that we just look at it okay khalas, you know what i mean you won that round you're not going to win the next round and mm -hmm. i think that's really what it is i looked at it that way i've been off of our family's been off of sugar for 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 about six six plus going on going on seven years now i look at it like this sugar is like like analogous to my nuffs mm -hmm. and we started off 
on our feet, got a takedown, we grappled, I got to your back, I got you in a rear naked choke. Why would I even think about letting you up right now? Right? Yeah. You're going to now know my technique for coming in on the takedown. You're going to know my technique now for taking your back. And you're going to be twice as inspired and, and, and have that type of rigor that you're going to come at me with it to prevent that from happening again. I feel like that's when we make headway on these things. Oh, let me have a cheat day. It's a lie, man. Cheat with che something cheat healthy. Cheat days are a lie. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I had a friend of mine as a doctor. I was in medical school. He went like 90 days without sugar. Yeah. A friend told him, now you deserve to, 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 you know, to give yourself a break. Stop being so hard on yourself. He said to him, I'm it. I was never able to recover from that. Oh, that was it. You went, it. Right, went back. right back to sugar. It's like taking that, that, taking that, what you're not supposed to take. And exactly. Then right back in. But you can substitute it, right? You can do healthy ingredients, three, All four healthy, healthy ingredients. Honey, you know, um, you know, uh, dates. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, um, stevia. I mean, there's all kinds of yeah. things that we can do. But you know, look, I love delicious food. I love sweets, right? Yeah. My kids are making them. We're making them at home. You know what I mean? So anyway, alhamdulillah. Well, thank you very much, Mila. Alhamdulillah. Greater reward you for being with us. Jazakallah. My pleasure. Thank you guys for tuning in. La ilaha illallah. That's we started. What he just kept saying. He kept saying it. La ilaha illallah. Look how simple it is. La ilaha illallah. This is putting the Creator first. And then we talked about towards the end honoring this vehicle that the creator has given us to get us through life and leave us your takeaways in the comments below subscribe if you haven't already we'll see you next time here every week with a new episode peace be with you assalamu alaikum